Good morning. Uh, we're richly blessed to see each of you in worship this morning, and we extend our special welcome to those of you who are joining us by live stream and others who will be listening and worshiping with us this afternoon on our Facebook recordings and also through YouTube. We welcome you to the house of the Lord to worship and to praise him on this Pentecost Sunday. May God certainly richly bless you as you richly bless us with your presence. Just a few announcements and uh, before we before we start looking at any, I got a I got a note here I want to read. In fact, I've got two notes from this young man, but I'm going to read one this Sunday and then read the other note next Sunday. Uh, dear First Presbyterian Church, thank you so much for the generous scholarship. I will use it to help further my education at the Citadel Military College of South Carolina. It has been a blessing growing up in our church surrounded by so many great leaders, mentors, and Christians. Thank you always. Thank you for always believing in me and teaching me about Jesus. Much love and God bless Jack Mulvey. And we'll have this posted on our bulletin board down here in the lobby of the educational building and you can read that further. Also, the large print upper room, July and August are here. I don't, I'm not sure about the small print, haven't seen those, but we've got a wide variety of these to others. I'm sure the small print will be coming in any day now, but uh, if you want to go ahead and pick up your large print, uh, you know, please do so, because uh, these are very, very popular, and, uh, and they will be used in July and August by a lot of you and by friends of our church who stopped by and picked those up. And we're just so happy to have those to share with other people. Following worship this morning, right back there on the mountainside in the back, get this, back of the sanctuary near the front door, figure that out. We're going to meet those who are interested in regrouping as the Friendship Club. And uh, I tell you, I've been exploring some, uh, some trips that are ahead of us. Hey, Sophie. And you know, in the Yadkin Valley, Yadkin Valley in October, there's something called the Sonker Festival. Hey, just thought I'd throw it out there. Friendship Club group meet back there on the right-hand side. Um, congregational meeting next Sunday following worship. We're going to elect two members at large for the 2022 Elder Nominating Committee. So next Sunday following worship. Please take a moment to look uh, over our financial sheet. It's on the green sheet, financial report for April 2022. And... Uh, Thank you for your generosity and your giving. And uh, we uh, hope that you'll continue to pray and participate in this as well. I'd encourage you to read over your bulletin, especially here on the back. Uh, we want to remember in our daily prayers, members of our church, uh, we want to pray daily for our shut-ins and friends and family of church members names are listed here. Perhaps we need to add others. Please call the church office if you'd like to share some names that we can be praying for in your family or in your friendship. Uh, our military, we want to remember them in daily prayers and other things. Uh, our search committee for the director of youth and family ministry. Uh, our upcoming PYC summer mission trip in June. Our partnership church in Guatemala, the Golgotha Presbyterian Church, and many of them are watching this morning or will be watching later on today. We say, uh, God bless you. It's good that we can have this relationship that we have uh, with uh, a church in another country. And uh, please pray for us as we remember and pray for you. We pray, too, for the families in Uvalda, Texas, and, uh, you know, as we've seen on our news all week, there's just been so much violence taking place in our country. What in the world is going wrong? I tell you, 
Satan is running wild. That's what. So we need to battle him with the armor of God. Let's pray for the people of the Ukraine also who are living in that kind of violence. This week we want to remember in Christian sympathy Nan Davis and her family at the death of her daughter, Carrie Beth. Uh, Carrie Beth grew up in this church. She was living now, and she's married in Wilmington. Uh, she died uh, just last, uh, last week. And her funeral is this afternoon at 2 o'clock uh, at the Presbyterian Church there in Wilmington. We remember and pray for Carrie Beth's family during all of this time. We also want to remember Martha Pope and her family at the death of her son, Tim Pope. Uh, when I was visiting with Martha when she was here, she's now been moved back down uh, near the coast at a facility down there. But uh, Tim and his wife were over staying with her uh, here on, on, uh, West, uh, uh, on uh, Old Post Road. And... Um, Tim talked fondly of growing up in this church, and he told me, he said, I, I would love to come over and just walk around on the inside, you know. And I said, sure, anytime, Tim, you know, please come on. Uh, we want to remember and pray for uh, our sister church in the Presbytery, the Northminster Presbyterian Church in Hickory, and of course, we do pray for our own ministry here at First Presbyterian and the churches throughout the greater Cherville area. We had 113 contacts through our care ministry this week. 100 were prayers. There were 13 cards mailed out. You'll find your prayer cards, one basket's in the narthex. One basket's here on the side of the Mulberry exit and the other here on the mountain exit. And please stop in and pick up a care card, fill out a name, Place it in that basket, and our care ministry will be tending to those this week. Uh, it's a very, very uh, wonderful ministry that's uh, been going on here for about 18 years now, and we do experience God's presence through prayer and uh, also the visitation by phone, by the way, through many of those who are on our care ministry. It is good to see you. Today is the day of Pentecost. We're going to worship the Lord, and we're going to praise his name, and we're going to seek his blessing upon us as we continue to minister in Christ's name in our time and in this place. But first, Mr. Joe Ganey.
Almighty God, send your Holy Spirit upon us in a fresh and new way that we may perfectly love you and faithfully follow you today and always. It's in the name and the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ that we worship and we pray. And in one voice, we join in praying his word in prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, what does the Christian church believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Ms. Mona B., Mr. Joe Ganey, and our choir. <laughs>
goodness. Thank you, choir, so much for that word. Let us continue our thoughts and prayer as we go to the Lord now. And Lord, uh, you know, you're, you've blessed us with this gift of prayer. We come to you at all times. We pray to you in our moments of crisis, in our moments of hurt and pain. We call out to you to heal us, to heal our brokenness, to heal those that we love. We pray for a cure. We ask for you to place your hand on our world to bring us peace and release us from hostility and violence. We pray, Lord, that your spirit would dwell upon us as the church would keep us pure to the mission that is called to proclaim Jesus Christ by word and deed in this present generation and to those that are to come. We ask your blessing upon marriages and we thank you for the blessing of families. We hold to the promise that you give us concerning new life, a new birth, and the resurrection in death. And in all of these matters, we ask for your guidance, and we pray for your way. Today, Lord, we want to pray are a wonderful blessing that you might bestow upon us, your family. We pray that you would bless us with a consciousness of your holy presence. For when we are living in that consciousness, there surrounds us much love, kindness, care. And the presence, a conscious presence of you walking with us, we see your creation in glorious eyes, we experience life day to day, not with drudgery. Nor are we overly burdened with concerns of this world. But we experience life and we experience promise. And we experience a peace that passeth all understanding. Conscious of your presence with us, we live and we speak the very will of God itself as we continually follow the Spirit's strength, freeing us from our own free will and living as one dedicated and committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. So it is today, Lord, we ask this blessing. We ask the blessing that would fill us with your gifts that we might be in a relationship, powerful relationship, growing relationship with you and with each other. And we make our prayer and ask your favor in Jesus' holy and precious name. And we, your children, all God's people say, amen, amen, yes. Through the prophet, we hear these words when it comes to giving to God's work. He said, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse says the Lord of hosts, and put me to the test. See if I will not open up the very floodgates of heaven and pour down for you 
an overwhelming blessing. The offering we bring, why, it's money. That's one way. But you know, there's so many gifts that you have been equipped with that are God-given. And the Lord has given us these gifts that we might glorify his name in all of the earth by living in those gifts with others. Let us pray. Awesome responsibility, but wonderful privilege that we have to be your partner, Lord, that you've called us to be your partner, to be your words, to speak it, to be your arms, to reach out and to embrace, to be your hands, to work and to serve, to be your feet that will carry us into the many places that are waiting to hear and experience the Lord Jesus Christ among them. You use us and our gifts to bring the spiritual truth to a human reality. Praise your name. Accept now the offerings that we bring and bless them in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> mm. Today is the day of Pentecost. Next Sunday is Trinity Sunday. So I'm making this proposal. We're going to talk about the third person of the Trinity. We're going to talk about the Pentecostal power that God has given each of us so that when we walk out of here today, may you go with a consciousness that you are Pentecostal Presbyterians. Amen. And uh, we're going to start our teaching by opening the Bible. And I'm going to be reading. And you can read along silently if you so desire. The words in your Bible or the words in the Pew Bible are... You can just listen as I read. I'll try to do a, a good job at reading these words, but uh, know that this is just an instrument that God is using to communicate my words that I'm reading, speaking, but your ears as you listen and your heart as you perceive. This is all God's doing, not that any of us might boast. Let's listen then to God's Word in the book of Acts. Acts is called the Acts of the Apostles. And we'll start with the second chapter. We're going to read verses 1 through 24 and then drop down to verses 36 through 41. Let us listen to the Word of God. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound of the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in their native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians and Medes, 
Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others hmm, sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel, that in the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to what I have to say. That Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. Now beginning with verse 36. Therefore let the entire house of Israel know that certainly God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added. Hmm. I believe that God always blesses the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Amen. May the 15th, Brenda and I were holed up over in our kitchen at 3005 Acre Drive in Cherville, North Carolina. We had just come from a devastating period of our life. All day on Saturday, May the 14th, we'd headed up 85 North from Montgomery, Alabama. We arrived, it was late. We were tired, we were emotionally strained, we were exhausted. 
And Leonard Bumgarner had already agreed to preach for me on Sunday. So it gave me a free ticket to lay out. And I needed to lay out Sunday morning. But as we sat there and as we sipped on our coffee and talking about the week prior and all of the activities that we'd experienced, a lot of the love and care that you sent our way, a feeling of God's presence and God's prayer, we turned over onto that radio station, you know, the one, 106.9, <laughs> broadcasting out of Asheville, North Carolina. The radio station started by Billy Graham, I believe. And lo and behold, as we turned it on, they were beginning a Bible study, a continuation from Ann Graham Lotes. Now, she is Billy Graham's daughter. And boy, I sat there, and for an hour, we listened to her teach on the Holy Spirit as presented in the Gospel of John. I made a few mental notes. Some will be gleaned here for you today. And then following Ann Graham Lotz's teaching, which to me was like getting a cool, cool, cool drink of good old spring water on a hot, thirsty day, we turned over to the worship service here. And lo and behold, here's Brother Leonard Bumgardner. Worship is about to start. And what did he preach on that day? Yeah, I know there was some of y'all here because I saw you. It was on the Holy Spirit. And again, there was a freshness. It was like God was speaking personally to me in a powerful, powerful way which I could not deny, back to back. And then I flicked over to Trinity Presbyterian Church down in Pensacola, Florida, where a friend of mine is the pastor, and he was preaching on a series following Easter on new beginnings. And he taught on that, and he being the storyteller that he is, he began to look in his, at his own life of those whom he heard from his kindergarten and first and second and third grade days in church to his youth group, uh, the leaders there at First Presbyterian Church in Spartanburg. He, he spoke of those as through whom God gave this word that he embraced in a young life, not knowing what he was receiving. And then he continued on, and he spoke of God's ways today that he brings new beginnings in our lives. It all seemed to fit together. It made me think, like sometimes I'm sure some of you may think, why they got together and worked that out. So they were all talking about the same thing. Yeah. Ann Graham Lotes and Leonard Bumgarner and Hugh Hamilton from Pensacola. How did y'all manage to do that, Leonard, in just a few days? Well, we know, don't we? It was what we call God thing. It was a God thing. This morning on the day of Pentecost, I want us to really give ourselves the attention that three, these three godly teachers were speaking of on May the 15th. But we'll give our attention as we have reflected on the teaching here in the book of Acts or the Acts of the Apostles. When you've read the book of Acts, 
and I'm sure maybe you have and you've wondered, why don't we see the same power of the Holy Spirit today? Why don't we see the Holy Spirit working like he did back then in today's present church? Why is not the church now so Holy Spirit seen like it was in the early church? Have you ever read the book of Acts and wondered why don't we see the power of the Holy Spirit in church today just like it was in the early church? Well, there's some Bible writers. I'm not going to call them scholars because I don't think they quite come up to that mark yet. But there's some Bible writers that try to explain this. The difference between then and now by saying, well, it was necessary in the early church for God to give it a jump start. You know, for God to give the apostles the power to do miraculous signs that attracted many folks. But they say, as the church began to grow by leaps and bounds in order, uh, in, uh, and the Old and the New Testament came into being, God no longer needed to work his miraculous power in order to reach people. And so the prevalence of signs and wonders, well, they just began to diminish. They, they slowed up over time. In other words, Christ's disciples haven't changed that much. But rather, it's God that has changed. Now, I can't see those who promote such thoughts as being Bible scholars, can you? No. Bible theorist, maybe? Well, there are others of us that cite Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And therefore insist that our church today should resemble that early Christian church. And the reason it doesn't some would say, is that God, that the people of God have become complacent. We've grown cold, or you get the picture. In other words, God hasn't changed. God is the same. God does provide miracles. God is present. God is always speaking. God is always looking are his people through which to work his miracles and signs. The only thing is, we've changed. We've changed. Scientifically, we try to explain so much away so that it makes sense to us in our modern day times and not archaic. Now, now, I think we need to head ourselves right back to the Bible. And in doing so, we can look at what Pentecostal power is here among us, which when taken seriously, will even enable First Presbyterian Church of Cherival to look like that early Christian church on the first day of Pentecost as we interpret it, not from a Jewish interpretation, a harvest festival, no, but a harvest that is being reaped by what God has planted through his church. And the first thing we're going to look at today, and I said four, which means, guess what? Next week, we'll look at three and four. We're not going to cram them all in here today. We're going to look at three and four next week. 
But the first, the first has to do with people. When we begin to talk about Pentecost power. Many Christians read Acts 2, 4. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and suddenly they could speak. Well, it doesn't say they could speak Zwahili, does it? But it says they could speak all of these different languages that were available into that time. And we say, well, I must not have the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, when I was in seminary, and Leonard can probably agree to this, we had, we had some of the guys in there, and some of the girls too, because they, they were joining us about that time, that before Greek school, they promised, they asked God, would God please bless them with the heavenly tongue being Greek? Because otherwise, you just had to sit and study that stuff. Study, you had to. If that is true for you, let me be perfectly clear. If your understanding of speaking in a foreign tongue, an unknown tongue, is that. Anyone who is in Christ, anyone who has repented of their sin and turned to Christ to receive forgiveness of sin has received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not here to debate this thing called the second baptism. I'm not going to debate that. But I am going to say this, because at one time I really followed that second. But the longer I've been in it, the more I understand what that second baptism is really saying, and that it's been here. When you have repented of your sin, when you have turned to Christ to receive forgiveness of sin, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 10, and 11. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. And the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, and just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. Paul also writes to the Christians in Corinth, Surely you know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit lives in you. And if Paul's word is not enough to convince you they hear in Scripture, what about the words of Jesus? And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth, and the world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him, and it doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. And let's not forget today's text. Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you and to your children and to those far away and to those who have been called by the Lord our God. In other words, the day of Pentecost is going to be reproduced in our church today. It is going to be reproduced through people like you and me who have come to a firm conclusion about faith in Christ for forgiveness, and who believes, therefore, have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, you just don't decide yourself to grow in relationship with God. It is the Spirit who is leading you. It is the Spirit who allows you to begin to hear God speaking to you in a variety of ways. 
We think God speaking is by listening with our ears only. No. God speaks to us through sight. God speaks to us through feel. God even speaks to us through an aroma. God speaks to us even in our taste. God consumes our very being that we become conscious of God speaking to us in a variety of ways, telling us and guiding us and giving us. The gift of the Holy Spirit, you got it. Just claim it. And once you claim it, then live it. There's also a certain perspective on Pentecost power. A certain perspective. Jesus said in Acts 1.8, you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. He will come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. You know, I believe that many Christians doubt whether they have the Spirit because they don't think the power of the Spirit is at work in them, causing them to witness or even serve the Lord. You know, all you need to do is resolve to yourself that you're going to obey what God commands you to do. In other words, the power of the Holy Spirit is not meant to motivate you to service and witness. But the power of the Holy Spirit is manifested when we do serve and when we do witness. That's when the Spirit takes our words, the Spirit takes our deeds, and begins to apply them to the heart of the person that we are serving or witnessing to and begins to apply them to the heart of the person that we are witnessing. The, script, the Spirit will use our witness to reach into the other person's heart and to do His will in that person's life, but the Spirit will not work. He doesn't twist your arm. The Spirit does not force you, the Spirit woos you, and we obey. The Spirit comes to us in loving ways of the Father. This shouldn't come as a surprise as Jesus linked the work of the Spirit to our obedience twice here in John 14, chapter 14. If you love me, Obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit. And then again, all who love me will do what I say, and my Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each of them. Our job is to get our agenda out of the way so that we can be obedient to how he wants us, how he wants us to live, to use us, to act, to be his servant in an exalting the love of the Father and the glory of the Son. One thing that Anne Graham Lotes said, listening to her teaching, she said, there's so many people that get bogged down in trying to define the Spirit. They get paralyzed within themselves about who the Spirit is. She said, the Spirit is Jesus Christ. The Spirit is Jesus Christ without the limitations of the flesh. When God came to earth as Jesus Christ, what does it say? It says, he emptied himself. In other words, he limited himself by coming in flesh and blood. When he came as the Holy Spirit, 
the limitations. We, he took the gloves off, we would say. There's no limitation. Our job is to get our agenda out of the way so that we might simply be obedient to how he wants us in exalting the love of the Father and the glory of the Son. So I need to say to you very clearly, if you're waiting on the Spirit to kick you in the rump so that you get out there to be a witness or a servant, it's not going to happen. Presbyterian Pentecostal power is manifested through people like you and me who are obedient to Christ's command. We know, we know, we just need to act on what we know. And it's there. Well, next Sunday, we're going to look at purpose. And we're also going to look at one other thing, and that's the privilege. The privilege of being the temple of Christ and having God's Spirit within us. It's a privilege. I want you to think about that. The purpose and the privilege that is to be fulfilled within us. In the meantime... God bless you and keep you as we go forth filled with the Spirit to witness and to be his power in this day and time. Hymn 316, would you please join me in this closing prayer as we pray by singing. If you're listening here or by live stream or this afternoon through YouTube, however it might be, the message, and God has used this uh, worship service to embrace your own heart and you're looking and searching for a church home, please accept our invitation. 
Join us here at First Presbyterian Church to be discipled into Jesus Christ. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Thank you.